안녕하십니까? 니콜라스입니다. And welcome to what could be the first video in a series of functional programming that I've been wanting to make for a long, long time. I believe that all developers should learn functional programming. Functional programming is a style of writing code. Now, this means that if you learn functional programming, if you like those ideas, you are going to be able to apply them with whatever language you like to work with. Now, of course, there are programming languages like Clojure or Scala that are more designed for functional programming and that have many built-in features that make it easier for us to write functional code. But nevertheless, learning functional programming is a skill that will help you no matter what language you write on. Learning functional programming will give you a new perspective and approach when solving programming problems. Functional programming is not something that you can learn and internalize in one afternoon. Functional programming is like a mindset. It's a different way of thinking and structuring your code. Learning it is going to make you a better developer. Now, this might be my personal opinion, but I feel like when I write functional code, the code is cleaner right from the start and it's harder for me to make bugs happen in the code. Bugs cannot hide so easy when you write your code in a functional style. And last but not least, functional developers are some of the best paid professionals in our industry. The top four highest paid programming languages are all functional programming languages. I don't think that this means that if we learn functional programming, we're just going to get immediately a salary raise. What I think this means is that experienced developers, senior developers with very good CVs and very good skills end up gravitating and choosing functional programming languages as they progress in their careers. Now, having said all these good things about functional programming, I have to say that I didn't have an easy time understanding functional programming. It didn't really click in my brain as easy as other things click. And that's not because the rules of functional programming or the concepts are hard to understand or memorize. Instead, I think it's because the explanations that I have seen about functional programming focus too much on the definitions of the terms, like mutability, pure functions, side effects, all those things. They define the terms very well, but they fail to show the developers why it's a good thing to write your code functionally. It's hard to sell functional programming to developers. It's hard to see the benefit of functional programming if instead of writing code and experience functional programming, we focus on the definitions and the history and all those things. So what I would like to do in this video, maybe in this series, if you like this video enough, I can make more videos about functional programming. What I would like to do would be to experience functional programming by comparing pieces of code written in different styles of programming to see what the benefits are, how they are different, and which one we like the most. So to see how some concepts of functional programming can make our code better right from the start, today we're going to talk about a concept called imperative code versus declarative code. When you write declarative code, your code is written to express the outcome that you want. When you write imperative code, your code is written as a step-by-step -step instruction to the computer to arrive to the outcome that you want. Before we freak out, let's look at a language that is declarative and that many of us have used already, whether we knew it was declarative or not. That language is CSS. CSS is a declarative language because as you can see here in this code, if I want to change the background color of the body, all I have to do is write down the outcome that I want. As you can see, I'm not writing down the step-by-step -step instructions to the computer to turn the background color into tomato. I just tell the browser what I want and the browser will figure out how to do it. I don't have to write the code to get the body element and check if it exists and then enter the styles and then override the background color. I don't have to do any of those things. If I did those things, if I wrote those steps down, that will be imperative code. Remember, declarative is about expressing what outcome you want. And imperative is about expressing how to get to that outcome step by step. So let's now solve a couple of code challenges in an imperative way and a declarative way, and then we can see which way we like the most. The code will be in JavaScript, which is an imperative programming language, but it has many methods and many functions that allow us to apply declarative style to our code. 
Now, if you don't know JavaScript, then the examples are maybe not going to make a lot of sense. And if you want to learn JavaScript for free, then please click the link below because they are going to find a course to learn JavaScript for free with me. But if you already know JavaScript, but you want to learn things like React.js, React Native, Redux, Next.js, Nest.js, Apollo, Go, Python, among many other things, you can also learn them for free in the link below with me. So our first code challenge is very easy. All I want to do is I want to make a function that receives a string and removes all the spaces from that string and replaces them with hard emojis. Now, the imperative way of solving this problem would be something like this. All we are doing here is creating a variable to hold the final result. Then we look inside of each character of the text that we want to clean. And depending if the character is a space or not, we add a heart or the character to the resulting string. And when we are done, we return the result. As you can see, this code is very, very imperative. We are writing one by one all the steps that need to be taken to fulfill the requirements of this function. Now let's look at the same function, but this time let's use declarative programming. Here we are using a method that all strings have in JavaScript called replace all where the first argument is the text I want to replace and the second one is the text I want to replace it with. It has the same result as the imperative function and also is easier to read and know what the function is doing. Now maybe in the background, in the inside of the replace all function, there is maybe some imperative code like the one that we wrote before. This is why you could say that all declarative code is built on top of imperative code. But us developers don't have to write imperative code. Instead, we can use functions that allow us to avoid writing imperative code. Apart from the code being longer in the imperative function, there is also a problem that arises from being able to implement the solution however we want to. If we just write imperative code, we might make a mistake and introduce a bug, for example. And our teammates, when they are reading our imperative code, will have a hard time understanding what we are trying to do at first glance. They will have to read step by step all the imperative code that we wrote to be able to understand what the function is doing. In our last code challenge, let's now make a function that removes all the odd numbers from an array of numbers. The imperative version looks something like this, which as you can see is sort of similar to what we did before. But the declarative version uses the filter function and it looks something like this. The first argument of the filter method is a function which is something very common in functional programming languages where you are going to be sending functions as arguments and also you can receive functions as values. But the filter function will return an array with all the elements that pass a condition. The condition is expressed in the function that is on the first argument. That function will be called for each item inside of the items array. If that function returns true, then the item will be added to the resulting array. If it returns false, it will go bye-bye. As you can see, here we're just specifying what is the filter that we would like to apply to the array. We are not concerned with how this filter will be applied. Let me know in the comments which approach do you like the most. Do you like imperative or declarative? I personally like declarative more. I try to use declarative code and functions as much as I can, but of course it's always important to use the right tool for the job. Some people dislike the declarative style because they say that to be able to understand that declarative code, you have to know what is the replace all function, you have to know what is the filter function in advance. And that's it for today's video. I just wanted to give you a tiny taste into how functional programming concepts help you approach problem solving in a different way. How they help you think about the way you write code in a different way. As you saw, the two styles couldn't be more different and one of them is more elegant in a way than the other. There are more functional programming concepts to discover, but I'm not sure if my audience would like me to keep talking about functional programming. So if you do, if you would like me to make more videos about FP, then please let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching as always. Stay happy, stay free, stay healthy. Eat kimchi, kamsamida, saranghayo. See you on the next one.